These are the announcements. DSYG family groups will meet for Bible study today at 1230. Students can join their family groups at dongsanyg.com slash Bible study with password emotions. Today, our joint service, DSYG and DSEM, will be celebrating the Lord's Supper. Please share the sacrament with us following the conclusion of worship. Our third announcement is in celebration of Easter that's coming up in April. Uh, we are going to be having an eight-week course on baptism and confirmation for DSEM. So if you have not been baptized as an infant or if you have not been confirmed through the application process here at our church, we are starting classes starting in February. This is uh, today call to worship, the Isaiah chapter 40, verse 3 through 8. A voice of the one calling in the wilderness of the prepared way for the Lord, the maker straight in the desert, a highway for our God. Every valley shall be the rise up, every mountain and the hill made low, and the low ground shall become level, and a rugged place of plain. And the glory of the Lord will be revealed, and the all people will see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has a sp spoken. A voice said, cry out. And I said, what shall I cry? All people are like grass, and all their faithfulness is like the flower of the field. The glass withered the flowers fell, because the breath of the Lord the blood on them. Surely the people are grass, the grass wither, the flowers fall, but the word of our God endures forever. We're going to sing uh, Christ is Mine Forevermore first.
next, let's sing This is Amazing Grace together. Let's recite the Apostles' Creed together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, 
the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And now, Yun Ji Chang will deliver the congregational prayer. Let's pray. Father God, thank you for this beautiful day you've given us. At this time, I pray for this world. Many are suffering from the effects of this pandemic and are distracted by worldly things. Even though it was tough, you never stopped watching over and protecting us throughout 2020, which is why we're still here in, 2020, in 2021. I pray for those who are lost, who feel empty and unworthy. Please remind them that through your eyes, we are precious and worthy of your love, even though we don't deserve it whatsoever. Father God, I want to thank you for everything you've done for us throughout our lives. And I pray that you'll continue just watching over us and protecting everyone in this world, Father God, and just heal those that are hurting inside. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Today, Bible passage is Psalm 35, 1 to 3, 13 through 18. Content, O Lord, with those who to content with me. Fight against those who fight against me. Take a hold of shield and the poker and arise for my help. Throw the spear and javelin against my pursuers, say to my soul, I am your salvation. Verses 13. But I, when they were sick, I wrote the sackcloth, I afflicted myself with fasting, I paid with head bowed on my chest. I went about as though I gripped for my friends. For my brother, as one who lament his mother, I bowed down in mourning. But in my stumbling, they rejoiced at the gathered. They gathered together against me, the wretches whom I did know, not know, tore at me without ceasing. Like a profane, the markers at the fest. They gnash and with their teeth. How long, O oh Lord, will you look on? Rescue me from their destruction, my, my precious life from the lions. I will thank you in the great congregation, in the mighty through I will praise you. Let's pray. God of Lord, today we are before you. Let us know your heart and mind when you hear the word, when you hear the sermon. I will look forward to the change our lives by the Holy Spirit, whether we understand the word or not, because I believe your word itself has power. We will listen to you, tell us your way. In the name of Jesus, amen. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. To begin with, uh, before I start the sermon, so let's take a look at the something interesting. Uh, this is uh, the Google's year in search 2020. Uh, it gives you a look at the, what people searches for the most during this year, last year. 2020. Uh, I don't know. So whatever Google is Christian company or the not, but the, I think that it is important to check it out because it is indispensable to our 
the everyday lives. Uh, the data provided the, by Google is very interesting. Uh, let's repeat this. Uh, there are the, so many searches in there. The, there are the category uh, searches. The searches first one is election the result and news also the election. Twenty twenty, the most of the searches the the world related to COVID. When you have a chance, you can do searching on Google. Uh, I guess America also the like Kim Jong Un. So one of the the man's the highest the searches result is Kim Jong Un. Uh, what stand out the most for you? So Among Us or the Parasite? Uh, the where's my stimulus money? Where is my stimulus money? Uh, the Kobe Bryant or COVID-19? Uh, the most the notable the things were the categories, the categories. The difference from the previous year, the, I mean, the 2018, 2017. So when you compare that, the new categories were created with so many new search terms, in particular, the how-tos. How to's. What people searched for the most in 2020 is how and why. There are many search terms related to COVID. What does this tell us? What is this the tell us? What do you think about this search result? There are the many meanings, but the, in my opinion, how COVID-19 came about uh, is very important to my, our the previous the years. And then uh, how COVID-19 came about and how Black Lives Matter started, uh, what happens in the future, how to make hand, hand sanitizer, how to cut hair, what do people ask these questions? These questions are helpful in understanding our thoughts and emotions. This understanding also helps us to figure out how to solve the problems in the future. Furthermore, as a Christian, as Christians, what should we do? through this, the readers. How to ask what God wants. In these types of situations, I think that is a, one of the sign of a true of a, the mature attitude to have as a Christian. Sometimes we are in incomprehensible situations like in 2020. We should look at our emotions in situations that we can understand. All of the things were created by God and they were the permitted to happen. Image of God. God refers to us as this. A being that resembles me. Because all the emotions we feel were also created by Him. Having feelings of sadness, feelings of, feelings of the fear, jealousy, and even anger are not. Because we are 
the immature, weak, or bad. We are all made in the image of God. For this so, we have to change the questions from why does COVID hurt us? Why can't I go to church? Why should I wear the uh, mask? To questions like what do we do in the, in the future? What does God want through this? What am I feeling about this situation? These are types of questions we should be asking. Likewise, we shame should be said about our emotions. From I shouldn't be said to said to the how should I deal with my sadness? And from I shouldn't be angry to should I deal with my anger? Because we are all an image of God. Say it again. Because we are all an image of God. Today we will uh, talk about this in Psalm 35. First, uh, uh, door rule, door that you open easily. Uh, when have you felt anger? When have you felt anger? When have you felt you were put in an unfair position? When have you been the wronged? When have you not received the treatment you deserved? Also, how do you feel anger? How do you let your anger out? Do you throw things or do you drink? Or do you play games? Are you glued to your the phone? Do you scream? Do you binge watch Netflix for a long time? Do you condemn yourself? Yeah, so there is the many ways how to we be out the anger. Everything is correct. Everything is right. However, uh, it is important to remember uh, again, I, that I have to the right be anger. Experiencing feeling of the anger is also a previous image of God, and you are made in His image. Therefore, uh, we must learn to express out our anger correctly. Uh, say it again. We must learn to express our anger correctly. When I have the thought of anger, I ask myself, how will I deal with my anger? Everyone has their own way of expressing their feelings, and they are the many way for me to express my feelings too. We need to know and learn how to do it properly. Uh, you can, you can uh, write in journal or sing, meet people and have to the conversations or to play basketball or soccer or the moving activity, go for a run. Or you can just sleep. Uh, I've also seen the people who that sometimes do not just speak as a way to show their anger. Just the side, keep the silence. It is the, it is the, he is one of the expression to his anger. Uh, the moment we are the angry, we have uh, the choice. Uh, in the moment of anger, you have uh, the choice. Uh, sometimes I call this the door, the rule. Door rule. Uh, there are moments when I get angry too. Uh, stop a moment, just a step a moment. When you get angry, just a stop a moment. Take a breath or for the five minutes, or just the one minute, or just even the thirty seconds. 
and then think, there are two doors in front of me now. There are two doors in front of me now. Uh, I can choose a destructive path or I can could go, I can could go before God. Uh, do you follow, follow this concept? Follow me? Uh, let's get more specific. So there are the two doors. I don't know the so right door is the right door or, is, uh, or is left door is the wrong door. I don't know. But however, uh, let's get the more specific. The behind the one door is the turning to the alcohol, the picking the fight, uh, or the whatever else you get you in the trouble. The other door, other door is bringing you the first tribulation to God in prayer, doing something the constructive, and another the hill there, the options in order to find the peace. When it comes time to the make a decision, the which door do I open now? I ask you now. I ask you now. Which door will you open when you have the angry? Uh, let's dig a, a little more the further. The, the door you choose most open the usually only leads you to that same door again and again. This is because the, this choice become our habit and become the second nature. I have to throw feet up the range when I, ha when I am the angry, and I complain and grumble when I am sad. Sometimes we say it like this. However, the, there is not the sus sustainable option. The fundamental the solution is to face the problems. The bottom line is, uh, when you are the angry, uh, we have, you have a choice to make. Will you open the good door that leads to, to the solutions? Or will you open the bad door that only keeps you in that anger and will lead you to more. Let's remember. Let's remember. You can deal with your anger the right way, correct way. The second. Anger is expressed through prayers. Prayer. So, what door did David open in today's passage in Psalm 35? What door, what door did he open when he was angry? Psalm 35 is similar to the previous the chapter 34. Uh, however, the, I can say that the chapter 34 and 35 were the written in the same situation, but the two chapters are the orderly, the synony synony synonymous, and have the many the similar parts. So many scholars usually explain these two pieces together. If David wrote these psalms at the same time, it would be the more helpful for us to understand what state David was in. The background for chapter 4 is the pre uh, preci uh, precisely uh, preciously in the heading. The heading, the 34th heading said, when he pretended to be in shame before the Abimelech, who drew him away and he left. This is a head. In 1st Samuel chapter 21, we can see what led to David being the chasing by, by King Saul. Let's look at the first Samuel chapter 21. Uh, I read it for you. Uh, 
And David rose and fully that day from the soul and went to Agish, the king of Gath. And the servant of Agish said to him, Is not this David the king of the land? Did they not sing to the one another of him the dances? The soul has struck down his thousand, and David has the ten thousands. And David, and David took these words to heart, was much afraid of the Agish of king of the Goth. So he changed his behavior before them and pretended to be in shame in their hands and made marks on doors of the gate in his speed run down his beard. Then, then Agish said to his servants, Behold, you see the man is mad. Why then have you brought him to me? Do I lack the mad, mad man that you had the brought to this fellow to behave as a mad, mad man in my presence? Shall this fellow come into my house? David flees from the soul to the Philistines. If he stayed, he would uh, had been killed by him. His home, the Israel, is no longer a safe place of, for the David. He is wanted by King Saul, and the Israelites were ordered to search for him. He had no choice but to flee to the Philistines. Who is Abimelech in this passage? Who is the Abimelech? He was the king of the Palestines. David was their enemy. David, were, David was a war hero from the Israel, and he had killed thousands of the Palestinians in the battle. Therefore, the, he had no other choice but to uh, pretend to be in the Ishan in order to to live among his, his enemies. Let's imagine. Uh, he, let, he let his door down his beard and made marks on the doors of the gates. How, how real were the actions that the king actually thought he was the genuinely crazy? And the king has him expelled from his palace. How miserable these situations, how depressing is this? Let's imagine what David felt like the before the begging for his life the like this. He must have felt incredibly the low and bereaved. In a situation where his life was barely saved and he was alone, what kind of thought might he had, have had? Would, uh, wouldn't he have been in complete misery? Uh, the passage said, The thousands of people were used to follow my lead and praise me and now gone. My glory days are over, like this David confessed. All he had left was his messy hair that drew down his beard and the shame in his heart. He couldn't barely wipe away the tears and confess just, O oh God, O oh God. What else could he have confessed? No amount of re resentment, anger, or sadness could, could have the, brought him the comfort. He must have felt the pitiful and the miserable when, when, he, when he thought about himself and felt uh, as if he had 
the no future. And hope is and hope in his life was cut off. Dave, David is in this situation now. Let's go back to Psalm 35, verse 1 to the 3. He said, Content, O Lord, with those contend with me. Fight against those who fight against me. Verse 2. Take a hold of a shield and the blocker and rose my, for my help. Throw the spear and the javelin against my departures. Say to my soul, I am your salvation. Let's, uh, let's look at the verses 1 through 3, which contain word terminology. Word terminology. He speaks of the fighting, the violence, and the weaponry, such as shield, spears, and javelins. How much the urgency can be the sensed, sensed behind these words? How much the urgent? How much the how much the fear urgency? Verse, verse fifteen. For my the struggling, they rejoiced and the gathered gathered, they gathered together against me, wretches whom I did not know, tore Emma without ceasing. Sixteen. The like of propane the markers at the feast, they gnash at me with their teeth. How long, O oh Lord, will you look on? Rescue me from their destruction, my precious life from the lions. They are the markers all around me, my life and the state of my well-being is being the threatened. Help me, God, God, avenge them on my behalf. You are the only one who can do it. Verse 13 said again, But I, when they were sick, I wrote the sacrilege and afflicted myself with the fasting. I prayed with head bowed on my chest. Verse 13 says that, it, that his prayers returned to him. His prayers returned to him. His anger word expressed in prayer. He expressed anger and resentment to God. In fact, this was cry for help in search of the comfort. It's like ask taking care of me because I am here. Even if we feel uh, that there is no answer from God, we must continue to seek Him by praying during time like this. He always listening and He answers in His perfect timing. What else did David express? Verse 13 to say, the I afflicted myself with the fasting. And verse 18 say, I will thank you in the great congregation. In the mighty throne, I will praise you. In verse 13, the fasting was the form of his expression. And then, verse 18 is expressioned through the pray, praise. There are the many other ways we can bring our emotions to God. What do all of these different forms of expressions have in common? What, what is expressions that have in common? They are the all expressions made before God, not before man. Let's go back to my first question. Which door of the expression do you usually open when you are angry? 
where is the, your the anger directed the, toward a person or toward God? Who is the source of your anger? The me, another person, or is it God? We must deal with our anger properly, the like David. Psalm 35 shows us a good the model of this. David expressed his anger in prayer toward God instead of relying on others and staying put in his situations. The third, anger destroys the people, but holy anger to save the people. Here are two, ex ex uh, here are two examples of anger that was to deal with properly the present in Bible. They are the present by the David and Jesus. Uh, Mark, Mark chapter 3, verse 5, and John chapter 2 uh, say, show, show us Jesus the how to be angry. Uh, Mark, Mark chapter 3 say, and he looked around them at them with anger, the grip at their the hardness of hearts, and said to the man, Stretch out your hand. He stretched it out, and his hands were restored. And John chapter 2. The passover over the Jews, Jews was the hand, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In the temple, he found those who were the selling auction and sheep and the pigeons, and there were the money changers sitting there. And making the whip of court, he dropped them all of the temple with the sheep and the auction, and he peered out the coin of the money chains and overturned their tables. And he told those who sold the pigeons, take things away. Do not make my father's house a house of the trade. Jesus himself was angry at times. However, the Jesus' anger was never selfish in nature. Instead, it was always because other were the dishonoring his father. Selfish anger is always destructive and never accomplishes God's purpose. Right, righteousness anger, the light, the one Jesus displayed, is always concerned with God's glory. And First Samuel chapter seventeen. Uh, David, we can we can see the, also the David the angry, holy angry. Uh, I wanna read the just the verse uh, forty six and forty seven. Mm. This day of the Lord will deliver you into my hand, and I will strike you down and cut off your head. I will give you the bad body of the host of Palestine these days, the bird of your air in the, in the wild beast of earth, that on the earth might know they are in uh, the God in Israel. 47, and there was an assembly may know the Lord saves not with my sword or spear, my battle in the Lord, and we give you into our hands. Uh, how did David, David express his anger? What was he accept about? He was angry with Goliath, was defiled God's name. He couldn't stand the name of God, his loved, be loved being the disgrace and brought down so low. He knew where, is, where his anger was going, and earlier, was to tell us to look at, at their fruit. Let's see what kind of the fruit was pro uh, produced by his anger. 
Uh, let's examine what kind of the result of anger has. Those, those eat the save, save and help people, or those it bring harm to them. As we saw earlier, the result of Jesus and David's anger produced the fruit of saving people and brought the growth. The thing that comes down from the heaven to bring the life. It's a new year. What door will you open with this new start? What will you save the people? Will you save the people? Will you the harm people? Is my anger the representative of the how God would express it? Or are you consumed by your own emotions? If you have been the opening the wrong door in your life, I pray that you start closing them instead this new year and start opening the doors of a blessing from heaven. And I pray that you will walk through these doors. May this lead to count, countless beliefs being the changing and opportunities for them to be saved. Let's pray. God, Heavenly Father, God of justice and mercy, thank you for you giving us a new day. Thank you for the making us realize that I am and the image of God during this first worship service this new year. I want to, I want to live according to Jesus and I want to, to live like Jesus. Please give us the renewal the strength to us who are weak and give us new abilities so that we can grow even further. I look forward to God's work that will be renewed through this through our emotions. I believe this. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Um, let us rise for a song of response.
because of what I've done, but because of who you are. I am a flower quickly fading, here today and gone tomorrow. A wave tossed in the ocean, a vapor in Thank you, God, for giving us things that we can offer back to you. We offer you the little things we have, but with all of our hearts. Please receive our offering and our hearts and bless each one of us. Uh, blessing this offering we are about to give, uh, we want for the extension of your kingdom by this offering. Please bless our working hands and blessing our source and income. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Before we commence with the communion part of our service, I want to read passage to you. So as a reminder to all of us who are partaking of the communion and for all of our congregation members and any newcomers who are watching our live stream uh, about our communion table. I'm reading from 1 Corinthians chapter 11 verses 27 to 29. Whoever therefore eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty concerning the body and the blood of the Lord. Let a person examine himself then, and so eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For anyone who eats and drinks without discerning the body eats and drinks judgment on himself. So this admonition is not only a warning, but also a welcome. That the table in which we are gathered to partake in the Lord's Supper is a welcome to all who come to the table, but also a warning that it is not to eat of the bread and drink of the cup without thinking. And so, therefore, anyone who has faith in the Lord Christ, who believe in their hearts and in their mind that he is their Christ, has been baptized or confirmed, is a member of our local church in good standing, may partake of the elements at our table. Anyone in our congregation may partake of the elements if they have completed confirmation 
or they have been baptized as adults. And with that, anyone may partake of the bread and drink of the cup of the Lord. So before we commence with the table, let's pray together. Oh, Heavenly Father, we ask that you are here now as we gather together to banquet and take hold of this body and of this blood that have been broken and beaten for us, spilled for us, so that we would be your people, that we would be able to stand righteous people, holy people, purified people, sanctified people, a people of God of both mind and body that is your sons and your daughters. May this be a precious reminder, I pray. Now, everyone, please come together, stand in the line as I read of the passage. Our congregation members will be coming forward, and they will be standing in the line, and they will be taking from the body of the Lord, which is the bread, and the cup of the Lord, which is the blood of Christ. And I'm going to read... The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, also, he took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Thank you for this banqueting table and your presence before us. May they always go before us, always remembering the cross and always remembering our Christ. That no matter what we go through, the pains and the sorrows, not only the anger in our hearts, angering our minds, all that is going to be contended is contended with the Lord as the Lord takes and the Lord gives. 
Blessed is the name of the Lord who washes and covers over a multitude of sins. And for our hearts who are purified. Now receive the benediction. Lord, make our way prosperous, not that we achieve high station, but that our lives may be an exhibit to the value of knowing God. Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely, and may your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Go in peace. Not much to offer you, not near what you deserve. But still I come because your cross has placed in me my worth. Oh Christ, my King of sympathy. Call me friend, your mercy sets me free, and I know I'm weak, I know I'm unworthy to call upon your name, but because of grace, because of your mercy, I stand here. This kind of love I'm hurt.